Hello, coaches, uh, fans of coaches, graduates, welcome graduates, and congratulations. I am Coach Tony, the founder of Coach Me, and it is my pleasure to MC the uh, seventh graduation we've run for Habit Coaches. I just a few quick words. Uh, the way it works is I, I give this little intro. I play pomp and circumstance because this is a real graduation, and that's uh, part of uh, many graduation ceremonies. Then I will um, introduce it to uh, introduce our commencement speaker, and then uh, turn it over to Kendra, who will uh, read the names of today's graduates, and then we will have time at the end for a networking session where we can celebrate and talk to each other um, one-on-one. So um, sounds like everyone can hear me okay. That's part of my job here is to do a quick uh, tech check. And um, so we seem good there. Uh, regarding the graduation and habit coaching, you know, this is now we're five, six years into really a brand new form of coaching where we were trying to fill some holes that um, I, we perceived at least existed in the coaching industry, especially around accountability and action and turning big goals into regular daily practice habits, essentially. And so uh, I think it's fair to say we pioneered this. So there's uh, we figured out how to deliver coaching over chat, uh, how to structure it, how to set expectations. And now uh, we've taken those, those learnings and turned it into um, a, a very successful uh, training program. So congratulations to everyone who came through this cohort. Uh, it's a really a big deal uh, for me and everyone at, in the Coach Demi community to um, see new coaches come through the program and to, to honor them. And so that today is about honoring you. Um, as part of that, uh, we have uh, a special keynote speaker. One of, his name is Rob Filardo. He is a productivity coach, a productivity habit coach. One of the first uh, habit coaches on the platform, one of the most successful, one of the most experienced Someone, when I say that we built this training by learning from other people, this is one of the coaches that we learn a lot from. And so uh, it is my great honor to bring to the stage Coach Rob Pilardo, and we are going to hear his wisdom on the world of habit coaching. Rob, could you please come to the stage? Hi, Tony. Hi, Rob. Can you hear me? We sure can. Excellent. Tony and Kendra, thank you so much for having me and welcome graduates. It's an honor to be here to celebrate this milestone with you. You're now on your way to coaching on the coach.me platform and congratulations on this achievement. So I'll give a little, little round of applause here. Uh, as you move forward in this coaching journey, I, I, I want to share some lessons that I've learned from coaching here. Uh, over, over the few years, I probably, you know, it was probably over a hundred lessons, but uh, I tried to, I tried to consolidate down and I, I thought about seven, I thought that I wanted to share here today. Uh, and, and I feel like some of these could, could be very specific to the coach.me platform as well. So uh, it may not just be just for productivity coaching specifically where I'm, where I'm positioned, but it, it really could just be from working with clients, both just in the digital medium as well. Uh, one, one thing I started to notice right away, my first lesson was that what was second nature to me or what felt like it was second nature or maybe overly simplistic could really be life-changing advice for someone else. Uh, initially, you know, I, I would hold certain things back uh, when I, for example, the idea of, of recommending to clients maybe that they should be focusing on, on sleep uh, or maybe looking at their calendar for the next day uh, to, to plan ahead and be proactive. Sometimes I would think about what a client had done before they started to hire a coach. They probably had been working on building habits themselves. Then they realized that they needed some more support. Then, you know, then they found the coach Me platform. They found the coach. They went through all these other steps to get here. Uh, so I was always hesitant to, to provide simple information first. But I ended up 
you know, retreating on that and backtracking with my approach with uh, over time, because I realized that simple, simple advice is not easy to implement often. And a lot of times the simple advice really is the best place to start. Uh, so instead of jumping in, in, in my, uh, from my experience, instead of jumping into apps and productivity systems or things that might be a little bit further or deeper down in the suggestion box, starting with the simple advice first can actually be uh, very significant for a client. And it's not that they've never heard this before, but just that they're working together with you on something that is simple, again, simple, but not easy. So start simple and don't hesitate to give out that, that type of what feels like it might be obvious advice. That's, that's, that's something that I've really started to learn to do more and more. Lesson number two, and again, I think this one is more specific to, to working in the, the digital coaching platform. Uh, say hello and set expectations quickly. I've seen, you know, many clients have not hired a coach before, never had a coaching experience before. And one of the great things about uh, websites that offer coaching is that it offers coaching for everyone. So uh, with that said, you know, expectations can be wildly different for, for clients. And there also may be some hesitancy when they first sign up. Uh, so I found that sometimes the speed of response for that very first touch point, when they signed up, they put in their credit card information, they chose, they chose you as their coach, uh, and then they're just kind of waiting. Uh, some, may, some people may be hitting refresh on their browser, <laughs> waiting to see like, oh, did they respond yet? They haven't responded. Did I make the right choice? Uh, and so w whenever possible, I try to be able to respond to at least say hello, even if I don't have, if I'm not physically at my desk and I'm able to respond with like a full length, uh, you know, review of what they've shared, I want to at least say hello and that I'm looking forward to, to discussing further with them, you know, later on that day, some, some kind of message to at least put them at ease. Uh, and I feel like that plus at setting any expectations uh, as soon as possible with what your style of coaching is. If you can provide that up front, that can also really help whether help determine whether you have a good match with someone up up front. Uh, so one, one last item related to that, if you have any chances to be able to get a little bit of FaceTime with that person, uh, even if it's over like a, a quick free call just to say hello, uh, I feel like that can also be a, a really good accelerator to to really deepen the relationship with the client and determine whether or not you have a good fit right up front. Lesson number three, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect coach. And the reason why I bring this up is because I feel like as coaches, and this is definitely something I've, I've kind of wrestled with before, there's this pressure to feel like we have to have everything together. We have to, we have to especially in the area where we are coaching, we're being positioned as an expert. Uh, and, and there is a pressure to, to feel like you have to have everything figured out. You have to have all the answers. And that uh, when it comes to your own life, you have to demonstrate that again, everything is, everything is perfect in this area because I'm an expert and that's, that's why you've hired me. But I've, I've actually found that it can be relieving, I think both for the client and for the coach to be transparent about around struggles that you're having as well. Even if it's in the same area that you're, that, that where you're working on, it actually helps you work and almost like uh, be in the trenches with your client to basically to share and swap challenges and, but then also share solutions. And just by, by, I feel like by opening up about, uh, you know, what your, what your life is really like and what you're really struggling with as well. And maybe even sharing, like, for example, a weekly review of all, all the, uh, the positive things and then all the challenges and the next steps you want to approach that. I think that, that puts clients at ease too, because it's not just them who are struggling. They realize that it's kind of a universal struggle. We're all, we're all working to build up these habits together and they're not easy. And I think sometimes that that also helps build a, a greater bond between you and your and your clients. Uh, so again, don't don't feel pressured that you have to be perfect in order to be a great coach. And one last thing related to this too, I also find that sometimes just being a coach for others can really build your own accountability in these habits. Because just because you don't have to be perfect, you still have to be trying really hard, and you still have to be giving it a lot of attention. So I feel like there is a reciprocal amount of accountability where just being accountable for others in turn will also make you be a lot more uh, accountable for yourself. Number four, lesson number four is be patient when clients become passive. Uh, there are times uh, in, in this digital coaching platform where uh, clients can kind of go dark or, or uh, stop responding for a while. And uh, one thing I want to express here is that it's, it's probably not, I would say it's, it's not your fault. Uh, there, is, there is almost uh, 
I, don't know, I, I see it happen quite a bit. I, I, however, it's only for certain periods. So in other words, they may, they may sign up, feel like they achieved something there and then, and then forget about it for a little bit. But then a couple of weeks later, they may come back and say, you know, thank you so much. I've read everything you've shared. Uh, I'm ready to start now. I've had some clients that have deleted the app off their phone accidentally or got a new phone and there was a technical limitation that prevented them from responding. So, so if, you do, if you do have some periods of inactivity with the client, don't stress about it. It's not your fault. Make sure that you still send something. Send something to say hello. Maybe you can share an article or two about something they may find interesting. Still try to provide value because even if somebody was disconnected for a time, if they see that you've been reaching out, they'll be even more excited to work with you when they're ready. Uh, and I have had some people that have, have come back over more than, more than a few months to say, I read everything you've sent, Rob, and I couldn't appreciate it more and I'm ready to get started. And it really surprised me. I kind of thought that I had lost them, but, uh, but they actually did come back. So keep that in mind and don't beat, your, beat yourself up if they, go, if they kind of go into that passive mode. Number five, uh, you may actually, you may find that a lot of clients who sign up to work with you uh, have already you know, read all the material. They've, they've already uh, done all the education. They've done all the analysis. They're, they're tracking everything. They're doing everything right. And I've seen many situations, clients that are, that are more skilled in a lot of the things that I'm working on uh, than I am. Uh, and, and they just, you know, they're just absolutely doing a fantastic job. Like, and, they're, and they're inspiring me. It's just fantastic to see it. However, they feel like they're failing and that's why they hired a coach. And what I, what I kind of break this down in, I see two different areas here related to the success uh, and whether or not somebody sticks with a habit. It has to do with their performance as far as how wh what actions they're actually taking, but then it also has to do with their own expectations. So in, in many instances, I'm finding the performance seems to be good. They're on a really good trend. They're learning more. They're, they're tracking everything. And, and they basically built a habit. However, their expectations are, were to be perfect, uh, or they were basically constraining themselves so much with the parameters of success that uh, it was almost they're almost set up for failure. And so they were feeling bad about it. So I'm, I find myself as a coach uh, sometimes working with some people on the, uh, on the performance, but I, I, sometimes it's, it's actually very common to be working more on the expectations, on allowing a little bit more flexibility and really demonstrating to somebody that they are on the right, right path. Sometimes, you know, these individuals are kind of in a silo and they're working on these habits in a very private way. So they don't realize that what they're, what they're attempting to do may, be very, uh, may not be very practical for a normal life. So talk, you know, helping refine the expectations maybe more of, of your job as the coach instead of just encouraging people to actually take action. Also, uh, in a little bit of a, a turn for the, for the negative here, you know, we, can, we can support people all as much as we can, but we can't take responsibility and we can't take action for our clients. There will be some, occasionally there will be some clients who will either project a little bit of blame on coach because they're not doing it, but uh, you know we're doing the best that we can to support and provide direction and provide next steps and, and cheer them on, but we still just don't see the next steps happening, no matter how small we try to break down those, you know, the next steps for guidance. Uh, and so I think it's, it's very you know, hard, especially at the beginning as a coach, you start to take responsibility for it, start to feel a little bit bad about it, but we, we can't take it personal. We can only take it so far. And, and I've definitely gone as far as to say, well, I can't do this for you, as as a leading uh you know a leading intro to uh to a message because um we have to we have to allow our clients to take responsibility for their own actions at the end of the day so what i care about here is that coaches don't beat themselves up in those instances but they do i, I would actually treat it more like a hard mode or a challenge mode in this example uh to say what can i do what maybe there's something a little bit more creative that i can do to go off of my my typical path of coaching to help uh, ignite something in that client to help get them more motiv motivated. And it could be a way for you to expand your own skill set and your own repertoire of approaches that you could take with clients when you're, in, when you're faced with somebody who's just not responding. And my last, uh, my last step here, my last lesson learned, number seven, always leave with accessible next steps. Uh, if you think about the, the journey for clients, these, these clients are, uh, you know, they've often tried and worked their way through building up their own habits themselves independently. Then they realized, uh, you know, it wasn't working or they were having some challenges. Then again, they did the research, they found the website, they found the coach, uh, and now they're trying, they're basically continuing to try. 
So they've, they've, it's not that they've never, they've never worked through this before. Uh, so I think one may, one key difference that coaches can really provide are accessible next steps. People may have this idea of wanting to become more fit. Uh, and so they, they think about the gym and they think about, they have a perspective of what they want to do when they, when in order to be fit, I have to go to the gym and I have to work out for 90 minutes, but they may not think about the idea of making things more accessible. Meaning, you know, if there's a really bad snowstorm, you can't go to the gym. Uh, you know, why, why can't you, why can't you work out in your home why, with, with just a few things, you know, right in your bedroom? Uh, why can't you do something with, with body weight exercises? There's a lot of things. Sometimes people need to get reframed away from those initial expectations that led them to needing a coach and they need something more accessible. And we want to be able to build, uh, recommendations that allow them to get more wins and build momentum. Uh, and that momentum, I think will, will be what, what really makes things different for a client compared to when they were working independently. So work your way to always allowing next steps from any conversation you have, uh, always give the client a, a plan of action. A very sh- it could be very short, like send me a message later today when you, when you walk out to the gym or send me a photo using the coach.me file feature, uh, you know, of your mailbox. I've seen, I've seen uh, pictures of mailboxes at five in the morning when people go for a run. You know, you can use this platform to make it fun for clients and they think of it like a game too. So these are, these are definitely the advantages of being able to coach on a platform like this. Uh, and the, and if you can really zero in on some foundational habits or keystone habits, such as uh, getting up earlier to allow other things to happen, you can really start a snowball effect of positivity for the client. So hopefully, hopefully these lessons were uh, were helpful for you and spark some spark some uh, some ideas on your end and how you want to be coaching clients on this platform. Best of luck to all the recent graduates and looking forward to seeing you in the Coach.me community. Rob, that was amazing. I mean, I loved hearing that. I know I've heard parts of it from you in the past, but that was such, um, I mean, gold, hard won uh, wisdom from having done this for a long time. I I so appreciate you coming and sharing that with us. And of course, we will share it more broadly with the whole community, even for the people who aren't here with us today. So um, Rob, much appreciated. And thank you for being here. And I'll let you step back from the stage and invite uh, Kendra on stage to uh, celebrate our graduates. Hello, Kendra. Hi, Tony. Thanks so much. And thanks, Rob. Uh, As Tony said, I've had some of these conversations with you before, but it was a lot of fun uh, to hear them again and hear them encapsulated in a in a nutshell. So I hope uh, I I think this was was right in line with what the folks in the cohort um, wanted to hear. So thanks so much for taking the time to share such a well-crafted message. Um, so now we get to my favorite part of today. I'm delighted to introduce our seventh cohort of the Coach.me Habit Coaching Certification Program. These coaches have studied and practiced and can guide their clients through harnessing momentum to make positive changes. Let's recognize these outstanding graduates. Justin Carey helps people who feel directionless or unfocused steer through the fog towards a more purposeful future by starting with five minutes of mindful reflection each day. Tanya DeRitter guides aspiring and new founders in building a meaningful business that brings them freedom and impact by starting with the keystone habit of setting priorities for the day. Safa Ellis Rawi helps entrepreneurs be productive and beat procrastination by starting with the keystone habit of setting priorities for the day. Dawn Grossi helps obligers and people pleasers with mindfulness for and towards themselves by starting with five minutes of breath work each day.
Jason here, helps individual leaders in their organizations become more intentional, empathetic, and authentic by creating a safe and better workspace for all employees. Kim Jefferson helps women over 40 feel like the confident woman of their dreams so they can stop dieting by starting with the keystone habit of eating your veggies. Oren Kivity delights in helping practitioners, healers, and therapists gain confidence and momentum by starting with a one word intention. Elkie Cisco helps stressed out nerds stay sane by starting with the keystone habit of just one breath. Mel Smeal helps outdoor lovers to find more time, motivation, and support to enjoy the benefits of nature by starting with bringing the outdoors inside. Sandra Scotty helps overwhelmed overthinkers relax their minds, organize their thoughts, and overcome their doubts so they can stress less and take action by starting with just five minutes of writing. Alberto Cabas Vidani helps aspiring content creators become prolific by starting with writing 50 words a day on any topic. All right, congratulations again to our newest habit coaches. Um, I'm so excited for you. It's always a lot of fun to read your profiles and, and think about each of you. I'm so proud of all the work that you've done these last more than two months. This has been officially our longest cohort. So I've had extra time with this group. It has been a lot of fun. I look forward to continuing to connect with many of you. And thank you all for joining us today. I know we have a few guests in the room as well for helping us to celebrate the hard work of these outstanding coaches. Make sure to click over to the networking area. There's That's the fun part of today is the chance to talk to the other coaches and I'll be there and Kendra and be, be there as well. Um, so thank you. And that's the end of the official uh, ceremony. Thank you.